Hello everyone, so this is the English Law Channel again, and I'm now going to look at uh, non-fatal offences against the person. The person in this context meaning the human body. So uh, first of all I'll start with a, a sub-topic which is um, crimes against autonomy. Autonomy is self, uh, auto, and the nomos is, is law, as in self-control, the ability to move where you want. Um, okay, so there's common assault. Um, now common assault has got two different parts. We often say assault and battery. Battery, we often define as assault by beating, as in punching, slapping, kicking, hitting with a blunt instrument, and so forth. Um, here's the difference. So battery, just explained, um, it means applying some uh, force which has not been consented to, whereas assault, bracket, simple assault, um, means threatening to do so but not actually doing so. So <clears throat> if you punch somebody, that's... Um, battery, if you threaten to punch them but don't actually consummate that threat, then that's assault. So, um, uh, all right, um, so these uh, these things can be committed um, separately. Um, you could threaten to, someone, to hit someone and then actually hit them, in which case you've turned simple assault into battery. So you've got to charge the right offence. There have been cases where people have charged the wrong offence and the case has been thrown out. Our oh, Cratcher against Leicester Magistrates Court 2013, the case of that. So, assault and battery are both offences, um, and um, they're also part of other offences, such as assault occasioning actually body, bodily harm, assault with intent to rob. Now, there were common law offences, but um, they became statutory offences by the Criminal Justice Act 1988. So, the principles about these offences are still are, are they found there in case law. So, um, there's also the law of tort about trespass to the person as in interfering with someone's body in some way. So these um, are triable summarily, as in uh, before a magistrate's court, no jury, and six months is the maximum prison term for these uh, crimes. So, um, okay, so common assault refers to both assault um, and battery. So if one person assaulted another, that could mean he hit the other person or simply threatened to do so. Um, so you've got to get the right one. So... Uh, Okay, so we sometimes talk about physical assault, which is battery, and psychic assault, which is common assault, as in not actually hitting the person. So, um, okay, uh, th there was a, a case called Venner, 1975, in which they defined it. A person's guilty of assault if he intentionally or recklessly leads someone to apprehend the application to his body of immediate unlawful force. Close quotation. So let's look at the actus reus here. Um, causing app um, apprehension, as in thinking that's going to happen if you apprehend it's about to happen so um so you lead another person to believe he's going to have force used against him um so the person doesn't need to be scared they might well be scared in savage and parmenter um the the house of lords uh, they said that venner was correctly decided and they underscored the fact that the um offense is um when uh, the victim b believes that he's going to suffer unlawful force in the near future um, all right, so uh, carry on uh, a little bit. So it's got to be fairly soon, immediate force. Now this is the tricky bit. Um, so uh, um, there's no assault if you if you think the harm is going to be a long time into the future. That was in a case called Halliday, um, or threatened from far away, and the person couldn't actually apply the assault to you soon. There was Thomas against NUM as in the National Union of Miners in 1986. This was um, some strike breakers going into the mine to work during the miners' strike in 1984, and people made these uh, threatening gestures to them um, uh, whilst the, the, their, these vehicles were going into the mine. The, the blackleg labour um, was threatened, but they were under police escort, so there was no um, possibility that these threats were going to be um, made real um, in the short term, so therefore it wasn't uh, assault. So... Um, the requirement for immediacy has been reduced uh, lately. Okay, so um, we, we care more about the fear than, than um, how soon the, the, the threat is going to be realised. So Smith against Chief Constable Woking, 1983, was this case. A man looked through the curtains of the victim's apartment. This scared the victim who called the police. Now, the defendant said that he wasn't guilty of assault. He'd done nothing to make the victim fear immediate um, violence. But anyway, that uh, this uh, argument was rejected because they said the um, uh, defendant's objective was to um, put the person in fear of violence. This is what Lord Justice Kerr had to say in this case. What else, other than some form of immediate violence, could the victim have been terrified about? 
Uh, when one is in a state of terror, one is often unable to analyse precisely what one is frightened is likely to happen next. When I say that, I'm speaking of a situation such as the present, where the person who causes one to be terrified is immediately adjacent, albeit on the other side of the window. It was clearly a situation where the basis of fear, which was instilled in her, was that she did not know what the defendant was going to do next, but what that, whatever he might be going to do next, and sufficiently immediately for the purposes of offence, was something of a violent nature. Close quotation. So this sort of con conduct um, is now dealt with um, under a separate statute, the Protection from Harassment Act 1997. Um, okay, so the, the leading authority on cases of this nature is Ireland, 1998. So the defendant called the victim a number of times, and there were threats, sometimes there were silent phone calls. But uh, the House of Lords said, um, this is in contents with Smith against uh, Woking, that the ingredients of assault were there. It didn't matter whether words were used or not, if the jury believed that the defendant's phone calls led the victim to expect immediate personal violence, that this um, didn't need to be done uh, face to face. So they, um, so now we have no doubt that um, the assault can be committed by words. A silent phone call could even be an assault. It might seem ludicrous, but that is the law. Okay, so the House of Lords have therefore they have um, attenuated the immediacy requirement. In Constanza 1996, the Court of Appeal found that sending threatening letters could be an assault, um, so long as it made the person believe they were going to suffer violence at some point in the future, even if distant. I remember the force used or threatened has to be unlawful, so no offence is committed if the defendant is, is acting in self-defence, um, or if the, the, the use of force is to affect a lawful arrest, as per Section 3.1 of the Criminal Law Act 1967. Um, uh, or um, if the uh, use of force is consented to. In Cousins 1982, it was said that a threat to kill is um, um, a lawful exercise of self-defence if you're trying to scare somebody off who's threatening to attack you. Someone's threatening to attack me, I um, uh, show a knife, or what is it, I brandish a knife, back off or I'll kill you. Um, so that would be, if that's self-defensive, that's no assault. Um, okay, another time, if, if, if there's, in a circus, the guy throwing knives at someone because it's consented to, that's not assault. Let's look at mens rea, assault. So um, it's got to be the intention uh, to, to uh, commit assault or common law recklessness. Um, so there's a foresight that the victim will believe that he or she is going to suffer unlawful force to the body. In Spratt 1990, the defendant fired an air pistol into the window of a flat for no good reason. The two pellets hit a child playing in the forecourt. The defendant wasn't even aware that the child was there. So the defendant was charged with assault, occasional action, body, bodily harm. Uh, under Section 47 of the Offences Against a Person Act, the Court of Appeal threw out his conviction. He couldn't be found guilty of assault, occasionally actually bodily harm, because the, concert, concert, the, the, the prosecution hadn't proved um, uh, that, that he um, uh, the bodily harm and an assault had caused it. Um, it had proved, yes, that there was bodily harm, um, but to be guilty of assault, he had to intend to hit the girl with the pellets or to cause her fear. Um, I have foresight of these two. He couldn't intend to do that if he didn't even realise she was present. Now, coming on to battery and assault by beating. Battery is this, any act which by the defendant is intended uh, or reckless about inflicting non-consensual lawful force to another person. So the act is reus here of battery. Well, what's force? So, as I said, this um, is like common assault, battery, we often say assault by beating. It's, it's not causing physical harm, but causing unwanted physical interference with someone um, or uh, making physical contact with this person. Now, restraining a person in Colin Wilcock, 1984, that was um, a battery, um, uh, poking somebody in the ribs, spitting in someone, Commonwealth and Cohen, 2002, that's um, a battery, cutting someone's hair without permission in DPP against Smith, 2006, um, cutting or even feeling the clothes in day, 19, uh, 1845, without without uh, permission or, or lawful excuse. The physical contact doesn't have to hurt the person, uh, no, but it might well do. Um, it's not a battery to drug someone, poison someone or gas someone. That's a separate crime. I mean, administering a noxious thing under the Offence Against the Person Act, section 23. So battery requires an action um, uh, it cannot be committed by omission. So a tree surgeon, if he cuts down a tree and a branch falls and then traps someone, pins a person against the ground, is not causing um, battery by, by failing to remove the branch. 
Um, okay, there's, there's still also the continuing act drop doctrine, as in Fagan against Metropolitan Police Commission in 19, uh, 1968, where the, the man drove onto the police officer's foot by accident. The police officer says, you're on my foot, drive off. And Fagan says, no, I won't actually. So that was held to be um, assault by Fagan. Um, all right, so uh, we'll go on. We have to think whether the, the direct contact is necessary. No, there doesn't need to be direct contact. There was Scott and Shepherd, a 1773 case. So the defendant was found guilty of battery because he threw a lit firework into a fireplace. The firework, firework um, not into a fireplace, into a market. The firework exploded in the victim's face, but only after it passed through the hands of several people. The court said that the, de the defendant was still liable. Um, so uh, um, it's it's a crime for a, a prankster to sh shout fire at a theater. Everyone runs to the to the uh, exits, and people um, get uh, get knocked over or get trapped in the in the throng. That's Martin, eighteen eighty one. But uh, it was probably what Oliver Wendell Holmes was saying that American Supreme Court justice in nineteen eighteen when he said that no free speech law would protect a man who shouted fire in a crowded theater. Incidentally who falsely shouted fire, shouted fire when there was no fire, just to cause a panic. Um, okay, Mitchell, 1983. The defendant assaulted the victim by pushing the person um, roughly, and then this uh, other person fell onto another and injured the victim. Um, it's not battery if, um, uh, let's say, um, one person digs a trench to try and make another fall into it, because the person falling into the trench didn't do so due to the application of force hasn't been shoved. So in the case of DPP against K, a minor, 1990, um, a uh, pupil, he put some, um, uh, what was it, battery um, acid into, um, uh, into some acid into the hand dryer in the school loo, and then people are going to dry their hands and uh, um, acid sprays onto them. Hilarious. But um, this was held to be battery. So what was the use of force? I suppose it was the acid hitting people's skin. So remember the force has got to be unlawful. So... Um, if you're acting in self-defense, that's not unlawful. If the action is consented to, that's that's not unlawful. Take Slingsby, 1995. I'll come back to that case. Um, uh, in Kendall and Gardner, 1966, two um, policemen, they were suspicious of two schoolboys, and they grabbed a hold of them to question them, prevent them running away. The boys, um, they uh, jostled, and they hit the policemen. Um, anyway, the boys were charged with assault, but uh, they... they um, they were convicted at the, some, the magistrate's court. The Queen's Bench uh, Divisional Court overturned the conviction, said the boys weren't under arrest. Um, so um, taking hold of them was assault by the officers. What the, what the, what the uh, boys did was um, using reasonable force and self-defence. The convictions were overturned. The police officers should have arrested them, and then that would have, they would have been in the clear. Okay, and, any, and any force used by the boys would have been assault, resisting lawful arrest. So Donnelly against Jackman, 1970. Uh, a policeman taps someone on the shoulder um, is to get the person's attention to stop him. The defendant then lamped the officer, so uh, he was convicted for that. Um, he appealed. The divisional court um, said, no, this is a proper conviction of the defendant. There was nothing wrong with the police officer tapping you on the shoulder. That's completely acceptable as a way to get your attention. So these very minor uses of force are not um, assault. Um, so that's just socially acceptable. Unconsented contacts happen all the time. We just bump into each other accidentally. We're not going to charge people with assault for that. Um, so Collins and Wilcock decided that. Um, okay, so um, a hearty slap on the back and greeting, for example. No, that's not uh, that's not assault. Um, okay, so the touching doesn't actually have to be hostile, perhaps surprisingly. Um, uh, but if the victim says, I don't want some sort of contact, then the, the um, defendant must not go on and, and perform that. OK, uh, for example, if you uh, carry out a medical procedure against the wishes of the patients, that would be assault. Well, what about mens rea, battery? Mens rea here is intentional recklessness about the unlawful contact. Um, it doesn't have to be an intentional recklessness to resulting harm. Look at Slingsby. So uh, the defendant here was not guilty of manslaughter because um, he had been in, um, digitally inserting into uh, his girlfriend's vagina and anus with his ring on. And um, uh, he might have thought there was some sort of um, injury was going to result, but he had no mens rea for, for battery. The actus reus is applying unlawful force without consent, right? The mens rea is the intention um, or foresight about unconsented force. 
So how do we charge um, uh, common assault? Well, this is how we do it. We've seen that um, physical harm uh, is not vital in, in battery. Um, in most cases, there is some sort of physical harm. So it's up to the prosecuting authorities to decide if they're going to charge it as common assault or the aggravated version, as in assault occasioning actual or body harm as per section 47 of the Offences Against the Person Act. The Crown Prosecution Service has got charging standards for prosecutors on this issue. They say that batteries causing um, uh, contusions, abrasions and so forth, uh, cuts, um, uh, swellings, a broken uh, snout, um, loss of teeth, black eyes are usually common assaults. More serious injuries are chargeable under Section 47 or Section 20 of the Offence Against the Person Act. So the charging standards are do not a force of law, they are guidelines. You don't always have to adhere to them. If you feel you have a good reason, you can go against the guidelines. There is some discretion there. So sometimes prosecutors undercharge, as in charge a less serious offence they could charge because the prospects of conviction are better, rather than let the person get off scot-free. Um, okay, so that's enough on this topic for the moment. Toodaloo.